Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Yes, I am back in the saddle after um, an interesting and difficult few weeks. Most of you guys know what I'm talking about, but I'm very glad to be back. Uh, I just want to quickly give a throw to my sponsor, Fume. Sponsor is a revolutionary non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. It is not a vape. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint for delicious natural flavors. Head to tryfume.com and use code HOLLY to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfume.com. Okay. Um, I'm very excited for my guest today. Uh, she shot her first scene the day after her 18th birthday, and then she retired at 19. Now, a decade later, she is back to tell her story, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome, Jesse Rogers. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. How are you feeling? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so... Jesse, you have like, you definitely have a story and I'm really excited to talk to you about it. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I'll start at the beginning. Yes. So how did you get into the adult industry? Um, well, I, I saw an ad on Craigslist. Oh, <laughs> which is the best place to look for a job. <laughs> and it just said, uh, modeling, like it didn't specify, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I had done modeling previously, um, but, you know, obviously I never did nude modeling. Right. So I went and talked to the agent and she was like, oh, basically it's it's porn. Um, and so she ended up booking me a, a shoot with Penthouse. I didn't, Which is a good way to start. Yeah. I mean, Penthouse is yeah. like, to start with them is, you know, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> And it, it wasn't anything hardcore. It was just pictures. Yeah. So that that was the first thing I ever did. And I didn't end up sticking with her. She just pretty much just booked me that. And then um, I bounced around with other <laughs> agents. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting day. Um, they took pictures of me. And then they were doing another scene like in the same house it was uh, misty stone and i can't remember who the male performer was but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah you don't you don't forget misty stone <laughs> yeah she's like such like a, a powerful force right. of a character who we love yes <laughs> um but yeah you, yeah i can see you forgetting the male performer but uh, <laughs> nobody forgets misty when they meet her so you did that penthouse shoot mm -hmm. um what was the next shoot that you worked on um I, I know I did XR and Fucked Hard 18. I can't remember which one came Okay. First. <laughs> and were they um, sex scenes? Yes. And boy, was it girl. Boy, girl. Yes. So how was your first boy, girl scene? Because that's obviously a much different experience mm -hmm. than a solo scene. Like, were you nervous going into oh, it? Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those scenes, actually, the Fucked Hard 18 and the XR, uh, I was very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and then like what was running through your head when you were on set were you thinking like what were you most nervous about um I think everything I don't know I I didn't know like how to look good for the camera you know um I also get nervous like meeting people in general mm -hmm. so then you add that layer of like okay now you have to perform too and I was like oh <laughs> yeah do you remember who your scene partners were um the x art was he was exclusive with x art I remember who he was but I just can't remember his name um and then the fucked heart 18 it was the guy that Josh he owned that website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know <clears throat> who that is. So how was the scene in general? Like, was it what you expected? Was it worse than you expected? Better than you expected? Uh, 
It wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't either. You probably didn't even <laughs> yeah. know what to expect, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, those two I didn't have a bad experience. It was just, I guess, normal, I guess. Okay. I don't know. So afterwards but, you were maybe, you know, thinking to yourself, okay, that wasn't yeah, so yeah, bad. Right. I could continue to do exactly. this. Exactly. Um, and you did. And how, like, how did your career progress from that? Because, I mean, you know, spoiler alert, we know that you had some bad experiences. Oh, yeah. So, like, mm-hmm. how long before you started to maybe think twice about being in the adult industry? Um, well, the first one actually happened within a, a few months. It was before I got my boob job. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up getting flown to the East Coast and it was actually just solo, solo shoot. So I thought, okay, this is going to be easy. Right. Um, like somewhere towards the end of the shoot, um, is there anything I can't say? No. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My vagina started to get sore and, and swollen because I was putting like really weird things in there all day. Like, you know, brooms, bananas, you know, things like that. I feel like I know what website <laughs> yeah. you were shooting for. <laughs> so <clears throat> I tried to say something and uh, the guy was like, oh, well, we're not going to pay you if you stop now. You've shot all of these other scenes. We'll just finish these next two. So I was like, oh, my gosh. So I called my agent and he he seemed surprised, even though he sent girls there all the time right um and I ended up finishing the shoot but in one of the scenes I was literally crying because I was so sore and then um and then the last one was when I discovered I could do anal very easily and it was like my saving grace I was like yes okay I'm gonna do anal for this last set um and that was pretty easy for me. Um, and then other than that, I had a few other experiences like down the road after I got my, my boob job. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I just want to touch upon this. Okay. Because yeah, a day of solos, one would think is not like such a big deal, not, mm-hmm. you know, hard to do. That's yeah. not the kind of scene that people would expect one to say they had a bad experience right, yeah. on. But, sorry, when you said, like, a broom, <laughs> yeah, I was right. kind of like, what? And it's just, I'm really sorry, and I'm so sad to hear this, because it's incredibly frustrating that you would be in pain and mm-hmm. that the shooter wouldn't take that into account. And unfortunately, I think that this happens you know, often, not often, that's not the right word, because there's so many wonderful male directors out there. There really, really are. I want to make sure that I say that. But I do hear that sometimes on set with men because it's like, because they don't have a vagina, Yeah, it's it's like they don't understand. Like, how how could you be sore from sticking a broom up your vagina? Like, you know what I mean? And like, oh, why can't you shoot back to back? Yeah, (laughs) I know. And the fact that you had to go anal Mm -hmm. to, like, save your vagina is, like, that's pretty shitty. No pun intended. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So that just, um, yeah, that makes me sad. And it makes me sad that that your needs, like, weren't, I don't know. I hate hearing stories like that. Yeah. So, okay. So, but that's that's not the end of it. So you had, tell me about your other experiences. Okay. Um... So I went from one agent to another Mm -hmm. because this one that I had that sent me to that shoot, he was also very unorganized. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, okay, well, maybe I should go with this one. He seems more professional. He has all these big name girls. And in some ways he was, but um, I do feel that he had like impaired empathy, like, that's a I good would, way to put it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would tell him I was sick, you know, 
through a strep throat, a cold, yeast infection, he would still somehow finagle me into going to set and say things like, oh, you know, companies would rather work with a sick girl than lose thousands of dollars and and then call me and, you know, make sure I was still going and all of these things. And, <clears throat> or even if I would just ask for a day off just to take a break, he would pressure me to still continue working. I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. But it wasn't like the straw that broke the camel's back. I still kept shooting and just dealing with his shit. Um, it was one incident with a, a male performer that I had that kind of just completely shocked me. Mm -hmm. um, it was someone that I kind of trusted. Like I hung out with him off camera. I would go to his house. Uh, you know, so he had my consent to have sex, but the way that we had sex the last time I saw him, it wasn't consensual. <laughs> so it, it was so long ago. I've, I've, I think I've gotten over it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So you have this fucking awful experience. So, right. and then you try to talk to people about it and mm -hmm. no one's listening to you. Um, is, so is that when you decided to leave yeah. the industry? Yeah. I, I had a talk with my agent and I told him what happened. I don't know why I thought I would get any kind of empathy from him, <laughs> but uh, he just like gave me this blank look stare and was like so did you guys have fun like that was his response to me <laughs> and um uh and then yeah I told him like yeah I think I'm gonna take a month off and see you know try to decide if I want to continue to stay in this industry or not um and yeah I, I ended up deciding to retire mm -hmm. and one of the last shoots that I did which by the way wasn't the gangbang everyone thinks I had a bad experience in the gangbang <laughs> and, oh my god that was so rough yeah it was rough but nobody hurt me not like I didn't get injured everything was consensual so right. that, that wasn't like the bad ex one of the bad experiences that I had um, one of the other ones that I had was like pr basically getting injured mm -hmm. on set. Uh, I was doing a girl, girl, ano shoot, which never, obviously never got released because within like the first two seconds, the first position I was in doggy, she just like rams this huge rippled glass dildo or glass toy inside my butt and <clears throat> I told her to stop because I was in pain and then I turn her around and there's like blood all over the bed. Um, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had instances where I like, I cut a little bit. Mm -hmm. This, this, it wasn't like that. Like it wasn't like a, a small little tear. Right. Which I can, I can deal with that. Um, I was still bleeding. Like even after I got home, I was still in pain. I had to reschedule shoots like weeks out. And I also, it was like, it, it was really painful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. after that happened, she stopped. I'm assuming you guys didn't finish the scene. Oh, no. Absolutely okay. not. So after this happens, um, you retire and then you, you speak out about your experiences. Right. And... Did you feel like you just had to say something, like you needed to have a voice because nobody was listening to you? Yeah, like I, I think I was just frustrated that people in the industry didn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously I didn't say anything publicly right away. I tried to talk to people within the industry first. Right. So I think, yeah, that added to the frustration. Um, and I, I guess I just, I had a lot of healing to do, too. Of course. Yeah. Do you, it's like, I don't even want to ask you if you, like, regret speaking out about the industry. Yeah. Because 
I, you know, absolutely see your motivations right. behind it now. But now, like, with some perspective, like, how do you feel about that time in your life? Would you have approached anything differently? I don't think so. Okay. I, I think, you know, I was really young. Mm -hmm. So it's, I guess, just part of the process of yeah. growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like, I mean, you know, as you know, there's been like some pushback. There's always pushback if like somebody has a bad experience in the adult industry and they come forward and they talk about mm -hmm. it. And I understand the pushback because there is a lot of like anti-porn activism out there by like religious right groups. And they're looking for anything to right. latch on to to say like the entire industry right, is right, terrible. Yeah. It's all bad. Everyone has these experiences, yeah. which isn't true. But I also think it's very important for the adult industry to take accountability for situations like this. Yeah. You know, you should have been heard. Your agent should have, you know, cared that you had this experience. Yeah. Like, you should have been able to, you know, take a break or process this or, you know, even, you know, speak out against these people who basically abused you. Yeah. And so I think it's also important that, you know, people understand that everybody's experiences are valid mm -hmm. and listen to experiences like yours yeah. and learn from them and grow from them right. because the adult industry is not perfect. Yeah. Like there's a fuck, there's a fuck ton of problems with it. Yeah. And <laughs> it's so much better now than it was. Was I've been in the right. industry for like twenty five years, and it's changed dramatically. Uh -huh. um, and I'm I'm really happy with where we're at now. I yeah. think we're really like in such a better place. And there's so many things yeah. that have come up now that that make it feel like a better place to work. But I've had times that I've been in the industry where I have also questioned like, what am I doing here? Right. You know what I mean. And yeah. I always shot very kind of soft, sensual scenes, but. I've had situations where I've had a model on set um, who who came to set and, like, didn't want to work because she said her vagina hurt. Mm -hmm. And her agent told me that she was lying oh, no. and that um, she was That's fine terrible. and that I should just shoot the scene and, you know. Oh, my god! And tell her to get over it. And I was like, I can't do that. Yeah. Like, I can't. And then, you know, they're threatening me and – and, and and she doesn't even want me to say anything because she doesn't want her agent to yell, yell at her. And I'm yeah. like, girl, I'm not going to do this. Right. Like, clearly you're in pain. Yeah. Like, this is crazy that we're even, that you're, that you even came to set today. Mm. You know? Yeah. And it was like so much about putting the dollar before the person. Right. And that is dehumanizing. W was this during that same time frame? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I really see, like, such a huge difference now and it's really come from these personal platforms right like only fans yeah. which has put power in the hands of the performers yeah and now because you guys can say fuck you <laughs> exactly. you know what i mean like i can make money on my own yeah. um now you have the power where brands are finally kind of recognizing that and being like oh maybe we should treat these people better yeah you know and that's just like it's totally changed like the culture on set right and i've always tried to cultivate like a safe a safe working environment and like take people into consideration but you know like i as a producer have been pressured by companies that i've worked for and stuff to get certain things done that you know i felt weren't wasn't the right thing to do yeah and um i feel like that's just changed so much so i'm glad do, do you think a lot of the bad eggs have gotten weeded out for yes. the mo most part? Yes. Yeah. And I think social media has a huge factor in yeah. that too because – and we really saw it even like during the pandemic. There was kind of like this second Me Too wave, right. again, fueled by the fact that performers now have financial independence mm -hmm. and so they have the freedom to speak their minds. And yeah. girls started talking about negative experiences they had with certain performers or directors and other girls were like, oh, my God, Me Too. Me too. Mm. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. and and it just like kind of word got around. And then, you know, there are people who are not working anymore because of it. There are people who disappeared for a while. And then I hear are still like working on the fringes. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, it's like, it is what it is. I mean, the industry, it's, it's, 
it's a collection of small businesses. Right. So you can't technically blacklist someone. You can just yeah. <laughs> get the word out yeah. and then, you know, hope that people make an informed decision about exactly. whether or not they want to work with them. And that's that's the key. Right. Um, I mean, when I was working, when this whole thing happened, you know, and I work for MindGeek, they were quite alarmed to hear, you know, that some of the directors that they had mm. working for them, you know, were just and, – and even, like – things that one may think is not necessarily a huge deal, but maybe using their positions of power to convince girls to give them like a blowjob in the car or oh, something. Cause then yeah. the girl thought like she would get a f starring role in a feature. Right. And they actually like called around and talked to agents and various girls and were like, you know, full disclosure, totally anonymous. Like who's a problem? Like, yeah. We need to know. And they fired a, they fired yeah, some people. I heard that. That's really good. I was not one of those people. <laughs> I don't I think like, anybody would want to fire you. No, thank you. But I mean, like, I didn't think that I would be because right. I've I've never tried to get anyone to give me a blowjob in a car, um, <laughs> <laughs> or anything else like that. But it did actually feel really good to to know that like everybody, you know, said that they had a good experience, and it felt good to know that like the fact that I had stuck to my guns mm -hmm. in a lot of situations and not pushed girls into mm. positions that they would be uncomfortable right. in, even though I felt punished at the time yeah. by like whoever I was working for yeah. that in the end, like that worked out. Yeah. Does that make that's sense? Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to talk about why Jesse has come back, what she's up to now and so much more. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates. All right, everybody, we're back. Okay, so let's talk about happier times, yeah. which is hopefully now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so uh, you've come back after a decade. Right. What Can you maybe talk a little bit about what you've been doing in the last 10 years and what made you decide to come back? Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I, I think it was in... 2019 that I started to get the idea of you know maybe I should do something online um, I didn't know like what exactly but I saw that social media was really taking off and that might be a good idea to take advantage of that <laughs> um, so my, I still had my twitch channel um, <clears throat> which so I pretty much deleted everything except for that for some reason and so I just I started streaming here and there and it wasn't right away that people started asking me for OnlyFans but at some point they did and I was like oh you know I don't know I don't know so much about it um and then I started looking it up and I also had a friend uh uh, Phoenix Azkani, she was doing it at the time, and so I started asking her questions about it. Um, and I would always see her uh, put something in her story, like, if you pay for OnlyFans, you're not uh, paying for a company or something like that. You're mm -hmm. just helping a girl pay her groceries for the week or something like that. She would post memes like that. So I was like, mm, this this seems interesting. Um, so after a few months, I decided to start an OnlyFans. And I'm trying to remember. I think I only started by like posting some pictures. And then I started to play around with the different features, like the live streaming and the messages, making videos and things like that. And... Yeah, I, I really liked it. I, I mean, I still like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you find, were you, 
Like, how quick was the onboarding of, like, old fans, like, people who recognized you from before? Um, you mean, like, on, on Twitch or? No, on, no, no, on OnlyFans. On, on so Only when you fans? came back to OnlyFans, was yeah. it kind of a little bit slow at first? Like, you weren't really, you kind of dipping your toes in the water? Or did you see, like, a lot of your old fans, people who knew you, jump in and be like, oh, my God, like, you're back. Yeah, it, I, it was somewhere in the middle because okay. I I had an old subreddit that I didn't use. Obviously, it's like the communities, but someone posted it on there. Mm-hmm. And so I got the old fans from there mm-hmm. as well. And they were like, oh, all excited about it and yeah. everything. Um, but yeah, I, I did look kind of different because my I always had like straight... Uh, blonde hair when I was shooting in the past and I I've been keeping my hair natural for for the most part I mean straight today but I usually have it curly and it's a lot darker than it was before so Mm -hmm. like sometimes when I was live streaming on Twitch people didn't even recognize me really yeah I have to say you literally look exactly the same like you haven't aged at all (laughs) thank you you really look the same it's it's pretty remarkable thank you (laughs) I mean obviously you've been like taking care of yourself since you've been you've been out yeah (laughs) were you nervous to come back at all were you nervous about getting backlash from people who were like you went out there and you badmouthed the industry and now you're back like what the fuck did you get any of that um no I I wasn't uh because it's like uh, what we do we get backlash (laughs) anyway working in this industry so it's like uh, if it happens it happens then yeah yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing yeah but for the most part people have been really nice so you weren't worried about people like in the industry being like why are you back not really no I figured you know the ones that would like actually care would just try to understand you know mm-hmm. as opposed to um I don't know I don't know how to explain it <laughs> yeah well and also too coming back as an independent content creator you know the power is in your hands and right you don't like have to go to set and see any of these oh other yeah people that were in the industry before right exactly. or old directors or anything like that so yeah you have a lot more control over exactly what. It probably felt a lot safer yes so yes. how have you found the industry to be different since you were last year? Well, we have a lot more options now. Um, I think obviously OnlyFans definitely changed the game in that way. Um, for me, personally, I'm doing everything independent. No more <laughs> ever having an agent. And I've also been taking things slower Um and then as far as my OnlyFans go, I, I do that independently as well. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe I'll, I'll get to, to a point where I'll take on more help. But right now, I'm the only person that I trust to do right. all of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And now, mm-hmm. and you have sh- shot for some studios, yes, right? Yes, I have. So tell me about the studios that you have shot for and what made you decide to go back and work for them. Um, yeah, so... The fact that I'm doing self-booking now, I think it's just a lot easier to pick and choose what, like, because I I remembered that I had a good experience with Mike Adriano, so I was always open to shooting with him again, and he actually initially reached out to me in 2020 as, like, a few months in of me starting an OnlyFans, but I wasn't ready to shoot Boy Girl yet. I was just, like, you know... Mm -hmm taking it slow and then 2022 rolls around I'm like okay I think I'm I'm ready Mm -hmm. yeah so I decided to shoot with him and we shot four scenes for his company and how was that coming back to set it was it was good yeah like every all of his crew is really really nice so that makes it a lot easier too yeah yeah (laughs) But yeah, I was definitely a little bit nervous, but it was still good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
do you like what would you say to your 18 year old self now like do you actually wish that maybe you had waited till you were older to get in Um, or do you think that would have made a difference in your experience I mean I, I honestly I I don't regret anything because I wouldn't be where I I am now and I wouldn't be making the decisions that I do now because I feel like now it's it's like I can do it right because of what I experienced yeah and I can look back and be like okay I should do it this way because this happened in the past so Mm -hmm. it's like yeah (laughs) yeah and I hear stories like the one that you had, the ones that you've had. And I think about, you know, how we do productions now where we have boundary checklists. Which oh, yeah. I think are so great. And I, right. it's funny because those have existed in the kink community yes. for a long yes. time. But mm-hmm. I guess in like straight mainstream porn, people never thought that yeah. that needed to be considered. Yeah, I um, remembered that. And that kink was the only one, yeah. pretty much the only one that Well, because they were that. doing some gnarly shit right. to you, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like they have to like be like, yeah. are you okay being like hung upside down and like right. penetrated with your mouth <laughs> gagged so you can't say anything? Yeah. But, but you know, they take really – they're very careful about making sure that people's boundaries are respected mm-hmm. and not crossed just because I think like in that situation that could easily happen if you don't take those measures to make sure that like everything's kosher. And we were just kind of lazy – in mainstream mm. yeah, I don't know I right. mean I always felt that as a woman and because I never really shot super rough stuff right you know if I shot a scene where I mean I would never shoot a scene where a guy would dunk your head in the toilet like, there's no <laughs> fucking way I would ever like that would never right. happen uh, yeah um but you know I, that I would think that I would be able to see if a girl was in distress and I could mm-hmm. tell like wait we need to cut she doesn't seem okay but yeah. I've I've realized as people have talked about their experiences and as we've been doing these boundary checklists that that is actually not true Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know what's going on in someone's head um when they're in the middle of a scene oh yeah you know what I mean yeah so I I can't trust my female intuition yeah you know that's not that's not good enough yeah and so I'm I really love these boundary checklists now because we can really just go over everything beforehand and you know it's discussed you know, between the models in front of the crew, like, so Mm -hmm. everybody knows like what's okay and what's not okay. And just really making sure that to articulate that you have complete control over the stop and the start and let us know if something's happening that you're uncomfortable with. Yeah. We have talent assistants on set now that are literally there. It's just there to advocate for you. So it's just like the environment is so much better and so much different. That's And I, and I wish that you'd, I wish you'd had that yeah. 10 years ago, you know? And did did that start after that Me Too movement that you were talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You no, know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of talk because, you know, a lot of performers didn't come back to shooting for brands after oh, wow. COVID because they were yeah. making so much money on their OnlyFans. Why yeah. the fuck would they? You know? And so I think a lot of brands were realized like, oh, wow, we don't have the power like we used to, like the balance of power has shifted right. and we really need to consider, you know, these people's needs and wants. And so there was a lot of internal meetings um, and, you know, some people got fired. Mm-hmm. And so when we came back to, to working, there was a whole new like structure and method of working put into place. And I, for one, was like really happy about that. Yeah. It just feels like it's a much better environment to work in now. That's good. You know? Yeah. But I feel good yeah. about it. Are, are you still working for Mind Geek? Uh, I actually, not in so many ways. I'm still working with them, but I'm no oh, longer okay. working for them. I, a lot of people know, um, I recently actually left my 12 year gig shooting for Twisties. Oh. Um, I'm with a metaverse startup called Joy, so I'm full time oh. with them. But we're working with Mind Geek still because oh, cool. browsers is part of our metaverse, so right. I'm still working with them, but not like for them specifically um but they're they're good people i've always had a great experience with them and they're very good good with the models and they treat them really well so i would say if you're gonna 
shoot again for brands, even yes. though I'm not the one doing the shooting anymore. <laughs> I, I bet you anything Twisties would love to have you back. Oh, yeah. I would love to. And I think you would have yeah. a really good experience. Yeah. I always had a good experience with Twisties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you are now married to someone who is not in the porn industry. Um, how did, like, how did he know that you had done porn when you first started dating, or was that a conversation that you had to have with him? And how did all of that? How did he take it? Uh, it, it was a, a conversation, and um, it wasn't like a big deal. He was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's always been so supportive of everything, which is like the complete opposite of how I've ever experienced relationships. Like mm -hmm. I've only ever had pretty much everybody in my life, agents, boyfriends, and all of that stuff, always trying to control me and, um, <clears throat> you know, be mean to me and things like that. And he's always been extremely supportive and like, <clears throat> he's, the first, also like the first person that I've ever met that encourages me to take a break. Whereas, you know, I, every, every situation that I've been in, even past relationships, people are always trying to push me, push me. So that's something I, I really love about him. Yeah. It means so, that he loves yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. And he cares about <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. you as a person. And your health and as yeah. a person and not about <clears throat> like, what you represent and what you can get for him. Exactly. Which is, yeah. I mean, that's all like any of us can ever hope for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, <clears throat> how did he come into your life? I mean, obviously we don't have to go into too much detail, but I just, I think about my relationship with my husband, who's same thing. Like he's doesn't try to control me, mm -hmm. supports me, wants only what's best for me. Um, whereas I had a previous marriage where it was the opposite. Right. Very much tried to control me. Um, yeah. and I feel that it was a lot of like self work that I did that mm -hmm. got me to a place where I was open to that kind of person coming yeah. into your life. Is, is that your experience? Do you think? I think so. Yeah. Because the, the relationship that I had before him, it, it was like right after I had retired from the industry. Mm -hmm. So I had so much stuff to heal from mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> uh, yeah. And then I took like two years, was it two years? Maybe like a year or two to just stay s single and went to therapy and started journaling a lot. And and then I met him <laughs> and things just worked out. We've been together ever since, like almost seven years now. Oh, yeah. wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's actually like about <laughs> as long as me and my husband. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's, I, I find that the universe brings you the right person when you're ready for it. Right. Do you know what I mean? I think that sometimes we fall prey to the idea that a man is going to rescue us from this mm. like, situation that we're in and right. we can be broken and he's going to heal us. Yeah, but we have to heal ourselves. I find that when we heal ourselves, yeah. that's when the right person comes in. Yeah, exactly. You know? So I'm really I'm glad <laughs> that you had that experience. So what were the biggest lessons that you learned about yourself during your time off from the industry? Um, I think one thing that I, I've taken away from all of this is especially um, looking back at how I went from, uh, as like when I was in the industry, I, I, I loved it. And then after I had those bad experiences, I hated it. <laughs> So I, I've kind of learned to not have like black and white thinking towards things, especially when I work different jobs. I'm like, OK, every job kind of has its pros and cons. Um, so it uh, I think I've I have like a more neutral mentality on things now yeah. as opposed to like that black and white thinking. I think also the other reasons like our frontal cortex isn't developed until we're like 20 between 23 to 25. So mm -hmm. I think that was the other th uh, thing that contributed to me being so emotional and um, with, with the, my perspective on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but then that's, 
that is an argument, and I don't know if you have an opinion on this because some people do, some people don't, that, you know, people shouldn't be able to get into porn until they're older, like 21 or something mm. like that. How do you feel about that? <sighs> it's hard because you can do so many other things at, at 18. Yeah. So it's like... If you're going to gatekeep that, then you should gatekeep other things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. So on, on one hand, I, I do, but it's like on the other hand, I don't. Because um, other girls have had experiences where like porn was kind of saved them in a way. If, mm -hmm. Like they were stripping and in, in an abusive relationship and then they came to porn and it, it helped them get out of that situation. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you literally said like everything that I, I think I yeah. agree with you so much on that. Cause I get that question too. Right. And it's like, well, if you can join the military right, exactly. and go off and yeah. like fight, you know, in Afghanistan and, and die yeah. for your country. Like if we, if we've decided that somebody's mature enough to make that right. kind of like serious life and death decision, however you feel about the army. Yeah. Um, then that person should be able to make those same decisions regarding like, exactly. doing porn or not. Yeah. So, yeah, it is it is kind of a difficult question. Yeah. And also, same thing about what you – I've talked to girls who are like, thank God I got into porn when yeah. I was 18 because, yeah, it saved me. It got me out of a bad situation. I was poor. I had nothing, and this got me, you know, where I'm independent. And then other girls have said, like, I was not ready. I was not emotionally ready. I made the wrong decisions. Right. So – in those situations, the only thing that I can really think is like, you know, let's just try to have more literacy out there mm -hmm. and more education and knowledge right. about getting into the adult industry and right. about like exactly. the pros and the cons. And let's, as the industry, try to improve our working conditions for people yeah, so that girls don't have experiences like you had. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think yeah. that I think that that has happened it, again, like. It ain't perfect. There's still, you know, yeah. some people out there and there's still some sets, I'm sure, where where girls don't have good experiences. But I feel like overall it's it's much better than it used to be. Yeah, it's definitely been more positive for most people. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do agree. It, it should be more out there what the cons are. So at least people are aware before they get into it. Mm -hmm. What would you give advice, you know, having considered everything that you've been through? What advice would you give to new girls considering getting into the industry? Um, do your research, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, and make sure it's something that you you really want to do. That because the content's gonna be out there forever and sometimes people think like oh you know people aren't gonna find out well yeah I think people are gonna find out even if you do like faceless or I, I don't know there's different ways that people dodge making content um there's always a chance that someone's gonna find out so I think having that awareness and I think also they they should like it <laughs> some way <laughs> yeah I mean like, that that seems like an obvious yeah. answer but you're right you're right because yeah. it doesn't matter you know how much money you make it'll never be enough to right. make up for if you feel like you've compromised like your integrity or yes. whatever you want to call it there's not a amount of money that can that can bring that back right so make sure that you're someone who enjoys having sex yes. on camera yeah first <laughs> before exactly. you just think about the money yeah yeah you're right yeah I mean yeah it's not for everyone um I, I enjoy a lot of different aspects about it like I enjoy the production you know in addition to the sex so yeah pretty much just that so are you happy to be back yes I'm very happy to be back <laughs> good well I'm happy you're back um Jesse thank you so much for coming on I know this was kind of a hard conversation in a lot of ways, um, but I'm, I'm really glad that you did. And um, I really hope that your story will help other people navigate these waters in a better way.
Yes, I hope so too. <laughs> can you tell everyone where they can find you online? Um, so my, I have a, a link tree and that has pretty much all of my links. It's uh, linktree.com slash MZ Jesse and then OnlyFans also has it's the same thing OnlyFans.com slash MZ Jesse fantastic and then you guys can of course find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall I somehow I'm still on TikTok I don't know how that happens <laughs> they want me gone so bad but I'm like hanging on by a fucking thread so if you're on TikTok, um, I'm at Holly Randall Unfiltered. Go ahead and follow me there. And of course, if you want to support the show and watch these interviews live, get access to bonus Q&As like I'm going to do with Jesse right after this, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you next week. 